With 117 rhinos poached this year alone, South Africa is facing a wildlife crisis. The number of poachings in the country have soared from an average of 18 dehornings between 2000 and 2005 to 247 between 2006 and 2012. This was the frightening reality driven home by Dr. Joanne Shaw to educators and youth this past week at SciFest. Dr. Shaw, the program officer for traffic, identified a large growth in demand for horn in Vietnam as one of the main reasons for disastrous increases in rhino poachings. Part of the factor is the huge economic growth that the country is currently undergoing um, and a new emerging middle class and people having disposable income for the first time and one of the ways that people like to express that is, is having rhino horn as a symbol of wealth. Along with this, rhino horn has been used for medicinal purposes. It's been prescribed as part of traditional Chinese medicine to treat high fevers, um, people with convulsions, people who are hemorrhaging. With this in mind, questions arise over what has been done to curb the problem. What we're actually doing on the ground at the moment includes working with governments to make sure that rhino horse stockpiles are properly monitored and controlled. Yet illegal attempts to alleviate the rise in poachings has been slow. This becomes clear through the Convention for the Trade of Endangered Species, which banned the sale and distribution of horns back in 1977, whereas it was only in 2008 that South Africa implemented such a ban. I think again no one predicted um, that it was likely to be a problem. The only reason, if, if, rhino, if people who owned rhino horn um, weren't behaving unscrupulously themselves, then this wouldn't have been an issue. Perhaps the South African government assumed that people with rhinos and people involved in rhino conservation wouldn't be putting horn onto the black market um, out of sheer greed. But unfortunately, it seems that that's what was happening. Alongside corruption, big game hunting for big money, which has attracted the interest of wealthy individuals aiming to capitalise on its merchandise, has allowed for a loophole to emerge in anti-trafficking efforts. I think people always recognise that because this is a way to get rhino horn out of the country legally, it could be exploited as a loophole. But because it was so expensive to do a rhino trophy hunt, it's about 200,000 rand, it was assumed that it would never be worth anyone's while to do that. But demand for horn and the price of horn is such at the moment that unscrupulous individuals are exploiting these loopholes as a way to get horn out of the country, not as a trophy, not to sit on a wall somewhere, but to be ground up and used. Assumptions may have played a role in the current rhino crisis. However, the rhino poaching incidents averaging nearly two attacks a day. One can expect the number of dehornings to reach 500 by the year's end. Demand from East Asia is not expected to decrease, so one can only hope that efforts by NGOs such as traffic, game farm owners and the government will help diminish the frequency of these brutal attacks. Thomas Mills, PsyQ, Gramstock.